So who is here this morning to hear about Jesus? Oh, <laughs> Woo, that was close. <laughs> There's a moment for the benefit of the camera. They did put their hands up eventually. Who is here this morning to hear about Jesus so they can tell others? Wow. Okay, very, very brave, very brave. You see, I think that's a pick of a question. Because if I'm honest, I'm more here for the former than I am the latter. I'm more here, really, to be honest, to hear about Jesus. Because it's great to hear about this wonderful well, man, wonderful God, who came to earth. But to tell about others... Sometimes I find that really difficult and tricky, that I don't really kind of think actually what I'm going to absorb, what I'm going to take in on a Sunday morning, that I'm going to be going out to all those that I meet to be telling them. You see, I think the reality is my Bible and a lot of other Bibles that other people read stop at Matthew 28 verse 15. It doesn't have Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20 in. What is Matthew 28, 16 to 20? It's this. The 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. When Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very ends of the age. You see, I think the reality is, we love that verse, don't we? Jesus is always going to be with us. We can baptize people into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But that little bit, you know, it's great, isn't it? All authority has been given to Jesus. But that little bit that says, therefore, because of all of that, go and make disciples of all nations. Obviously, a joke about it not being in my Bible. It, it is in my Bible. I haven't kind of cut it out or kind of crossed it off at all. But that is really hard. When we read that, we can get excited about it until it's the us that has to do it. And Jesus instructs us to go into the world Go into the world, yes, be a missionary, maybe to go off to wherever that might be, in another country, a different language, a different people group. But to go into the world that is my next door neighbour, that is the street I live in, that is my place of work and anywhere else, that is, I think, really, really difficult and tough to do. Now, I want to link Jesus' words there, Matthew 28, 16 to 20, with words that God spoke back in the beginning. It's our verse for the year that I've um, picked and chosen from Genesis 1, 28. Now, just before I read it, I just want to make it clear what I'm in, in drawing parallels between these two scriptures, I'm not saying that when Jesus spoke his words in Matthew 28, um, that his disciples said, oh yes, he's quoting from Genesis. He's quoting from the first book of the Bible. I wanted to draw my own conclusions from this to see if they're linked. So this isn't any kind of... Um, they are linked. I'm just trying to draw a little bit of a link to it from what God told the first humans to what Jesus is instructing us. Okay? So, 
And, and I've been greatly challenged by this Genesis chapter 1, uh, 28 reading, um, which is why I've picked it for, uh, for the church's verse for the year. I'm going to look at it in three parts. I'm only going to do the first part today, so don't kind of panic that we're, we're going to be here till, uh, till tea time. Um, the first part, uh, let's read the chapter first, uh, the verse first, shall we? Sorry. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. It says this, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, over every living creature that moves along the ground. So the first part I want to look at is about being fruitful and increasing in number. The second part is to fill the earth and subdue it, which is when you kind of look into all the different versions, it's quite subdue uh, or, or, or kind of maybe rule over it. Um, I, I prefer the word to govern. Um, and there's a, a version of the Bible called the voice um, that I think it kind of, it puts it really into context of what God's saying, fill the earth and subdue it. That he says uh, in, in this version, it's, I will make you trustees of my estate. Isn't that an amazing way of putting it across? That we are trustees of God's estate. And the third uh, one is that last little part, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, is to, to rule, to have dominion. What does it mean for that? And so today I'm going to look at uh, be fruitful and increase the number. We're going to have to wait till May to get the, uh, fill the earth and subdue it. And the final one in September time is be looking at what does it mean that we rule, that we have dominion over this world that we live in. So I asked the question, and you got it right, which was fantastic. In our little quiz that we had earlier, just, just a moment ago, what links all those questions is about being fruitful. The Old Testament is talking about a man or the man, Abraham, that became the nation Israel. Each verse that um, I picked at or picked through to, 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 to find um, the, the, the questions, all in the Old Testament ones talks about being fruitful. Adam and Eve, God told them to be fruitful. Noah, God told him to be fruitful. Abraham, God told him to be fruitful. Ishmael even says, you will become a fruitful nation. Jacob, to be fruitful. Joseph, when he was in Egypt, to be fruitful. And those New Testament references, um, both to individual Christians and also to the church, that pruned, bran pruned branches bear more fruit. Unproductive trees get cut down. And on the day of Pentecost, the fruit of, P sorry, huh, too many peas in this one, the fruit of Peter's preaching, we see there was 3,000 were added to their number. Now, Think about Peter before and after the Holy Spirit. Could Peter have stood up there and preached that sermon and 3,000 be added? I'm going to suggest it's a no. But it's with the fruit of being filled with the Holy Spirit. In being filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter, that enabled Peter, the Holy Spirit enabled Peter to preach that sermon that 3,000 got added. So it's all about being fruitful. The, the, two, the two verses um, from Matthew, from Genesis, they start like this. Genesis starts, God blessed them and said to them. And in the Matthew verse, it says, Jesus came to them and said, 
All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, I think that um, we've got that, the words, God bless them. And what is the blessing that we get from, from Jesus? Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The blessing is because Jesus has conquered death. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him and to him alone. And I think for me, there's, you, you can sometimes pick over words and you can make too much of it. But for me, I think this is really, really important. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. There is no other way. It wasn't all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. It's been given to Peter. It's been given to, 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 to Paul. It's been given to whoever else we want to choose. Or maybe other religions. It's been given to, to Buddha or it's been given to, to whoever else. Any other gods? No. All authority has been given to me, Jesus says. And I think that's really important. And I think sometimes as Christians, we might come across as being arrogant to say that actually Jesus is the only way to the Father. There is no other way. You cannot get to God. You cannot have eternal life any other way except through Jesus. But I think we need to have this fundamental bedrock at the very centre of our faith. If that is not true, what is the point in being a Christian? That there, I can't see any reason at all to be a Christian if that statement from Jesus isn't true. There's no point following him because he's just like everybody else. There is something that is far superior and far better about Jesus than any other faith, religion that there is. So the blessing is that Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. He has the authority to bless us. Be fruitful and increase in number. Genesis continues. What does Jesus say? The next part of Matthew. Jesus said to them, go and make disciples of all nations. Why is this Genesis reading my verse for the year? Our verse to get hold of and grapple with for the year. The whole verse, I think, has a lot to say about the way we live our lives for God. It's about, when we look at it, when we look at it, when we look at it, it's about being a 24-7 Christian. It's about actually every decision that we make is based upon what God says. Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and over every living creature that moves along the ground. Everything that we do, all decisions that we make, God has told us that we need to be wise about that. That's what this is saying, to rule over it. And so it's why I think for me it is such an important verse in the Bible. As I say, we're just going to have a little look at it um, this morning. For me, it's also about what we do together. Now, let's just take this verse, if we may, just at absolute total face value. You cannot increase in number by yourself. I think that is a fair statement without going into the birds and the bees on this one. You cannot increase in number by yourself. God didn't say to him or to her, be fruitful and increase in number. He said to them. And I think that's really, really important. We cannot increase in number as a church by me doing my bit, by you 
doing your bit. It's about us doing it all together. Now, it, it sounds right, doesn't it? Well, yes, you know, we're the body of Christ. You know, you're an eye. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a finger. You're a toe. You know, we're, 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 we're a leg. We're, we're a back. Whatever. Oh, well, we've all got our different jobs to do. That is absolutely correct. But we are all joined together. A finger cannot be independent. An arm cannot be independent to do its thing. So I think for, for me, there is a real strong challenge for us. Are we doing what we're doing together? Or are we just doing it as individuals? And I think that's really important that actually what we're doing is we support each other. I need, now my medical knowledge is going to be shown up as very poor here, um, but within the shoulder, I presume my arm without my shoulder cannot be connected. I'm going to look to a medical professional and I've got a nod. So that's, that's fine. That's fine. So that is apparently true. That if my shoulder wasn't there, I, my arm couldn't do anything because it would be on the ground. We need to support each other. If I'm an arm, I need a shoulder. Otherwise, it's pointless me doing anything. And of course, to be fruitful, for me to be fruitful, for you to be fruitful, when I say me, put you in that, in that position. For me to be fruitful, I need to be supported. And ultimately, obviously, we need to be supported by God himself. Psalm 123, the first two verses. It's a, I didn't realize this, actually, but it's a, it's a song of Solomon, this one is. And I'm not going to sing it. Don't kind of... <laughs> no, no, no. Don't encourage me. Don't encourage me. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three. No. Uh, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guard stands watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late. Toil for food to eat. Uh, sorry, I'll start that bit again. In vain you rise early and stay up late. Toil for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. We can labour as much as we like. I can do my thing for God, that I think I'm doing for God, as much as I like. But actually, am I, I might be busy, am I toiling in vain or not? To be fruitful, to be like Peter on the day of Pentecost, it comes from God. Peter could not stand up there by himself and preach a sermon. He might have had a go at it. He might have done his best and, 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 and studied scripture and, and thought, oh, these are some great ideas. Let's put that forward. Maybe a couple of people might have come forward and said, yeah, Peter, I, I hear what you're saying. And yeah, God's really talking to me. But unless the Holy Spirit was involved, unless Peter was filled and that he knew that he was filled from the Holy Spirit, that it was the Holy Spirit's words. I'm going to suggest that 3,000 would not have been added otherwise. It comes from God. We need to be building God's kingdom where he is building. Now, as I said, we can argue that all that we do is for God. And again, I, I agree with that. That if our intentions are, are kind of honourable, that we say, yes, actually, you know, all that I do is always for God. But I believe we need to be specific in what we're doing. We need to be intentional. I think the challenge, you see, for me this coming year, as hopefully we come out of this pandemic and all the restrictions and everything else that is that's been thrown upon us is what are we launching into is it really 
where God is building? Or is it just what we think he would like us to do? Now, I think there can be a fine line within that. But I think that is a hard question. It's a big question to ask ourselves as a church. And we can only do that by seeking God's face. I've got uh, one more reading to, to kind of finish with. And I've chosen this one very deliberately. It's 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 to 15. There was a few different verses that I could have chosen for this, but I really felt strongly uh, about choosing this particular verse because there is a promise that is attached to it. 2 Chronicles 7, 13 to 17. When I shut up the heavens so that there, there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be opened and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Last week, Keith mentioned the wrongs of prosperity teaching and I totally agree with him on that that what we do not take away from this uh, th th this passage is that if I do these certain things or don't do certain things I will get a blessing from God the main purpose of this is that our relationship with God is deepened that our will and his will become closer. And what I mean by that is that we shift. It's not a kind of God giving a bit of ground, we give, give a little bit of ground, and together, oh look, our wills now match. What we do when we call upon his name, when we humble ourselves, when we seek his face, when we turn from our wicked ways, is actually we shift over towards him and his thinking. Because if we're saying that God is God, then we're saying that actually his ways are not even the best ways. His ways are the right ways. And in doing that, we are shifting ourselves over to him. I think it's, my next little bit, I think this is dangerous to do this. But this year, when we get round to December 21 and we go, oh, oh, it's December already, oh, New Year, 23 next, no, 23, I thought we were on 19. When we get to that time in December, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus again. As I say, this is dangerous to me saying this. If we don't see fruitfulness, if we don't see an increase in number, the challenge is we need to change what we're doing. Now, I need to be so, so careful here that I'm not saying... Forest New Life Church, we need to grow in numbers. We, thank you. <laughs> I'm not saying that we need to become, to see God blessing us, we need to become a mega church or, or a, a large church or even a medium sized church. Please don't hear me say that. We need to apply this to our lives. Fruitfulness and increasing in number, we can take that in lots and lots of different ways on what that means for us. And obviously for us as a church also. As I say, it's a dangerous, but it's a strong challenge. If we're not seeing fruit 
What did John the Baptist say about those trees that don't bear fruit anymore? What should be done? They need to be cut down. It's not a, a pleasant thought. It's not a nice thought to, to say, church, we're doing it wrong. I'm not saying that now. It's not a nice idea to say, Forest New Life Church, you've done your bit. It's time to close the doors. But I do believe in, in taking scripture seriously, in taking God's word seriously, when he says to us, when he blesses us and says, increase in number, when Jesus says, go into the world and we sit, I think then we need to reflect upon what we are doing as Christians. So be encouraged <laughs> by those words because just like Peter, hallelujah for Peter in the Bible because we, it's almost a reflection of ourselves, well, it's a reflection of me anyway, for sure. What he does without the Holy Spirit and what he does with the Holy Spirit. That difference to draw that very, very black and white. That actually, it's with the Holy Spirit that actually we can increase in number. We can be a blessing and we can be fruitful. Amen. Thank you.